Now that you're done setting up your all new Mac mini, you're probably left wondering what's next? What are some good settings to definitely change? As well as how do I set it up so I could play some actual PC Steam games on this little device? Well, that's where I'm gonna go ahead and come in and show you my favorite settings that I use on my personal device so you can use your Mac mini to its full potential. So let's start off by unlocking our device right now. And the first thing I like to show you is how to disable the auto launch apps whenever you log in. You'll find this ability in the system settings tab and go into system settings right here. And then on the search bar right here, just type in login and on the top portion where it says login items and extension, click on here. And from here, you'll be able to see the apps that are automatically logged in and just make sure you disable it. So uh, as an example, I have the Epic game disabled, but if I enable it, notice how it just launches automatically upon startup, just disable it. And if you see it on this list, select it and just hit the minus icon and that will remove those apps from automatically launching each and every time you log into your device. Now, if you're just using your Mac mini for just small tasks here and there, you may want to consider enabling low power mode. You see, just like laptops, you could actually have this device to run on its low power mode, or even better, if you have an M4 Pro, you could allow it to run in its power boost mode. You'll find this new ability in the energy tab on your system settings, and right above here is where you can enable low power mode. And if you have once more the M4 Pro version, you'll find a drop down menu that will allow you to run your M4 Pro at maximum power at all times for increased productivity workflows for 3D modeling and such. So that's an amazing tool right there. Now, regardless in which screen size display you're using, you may want to give yourself more real estate space. And one of the best ways to give yourself the maximum is by having this little toolbar down here to automatically go down when it's not in use. You'll find this ability in the desktop and dock section. And on the bottom where it shows automatic hide and show dock, enable this and now your dock will automatically go down and as soon as your mouse or cursor gets near it it will automatically reappear and will hide back now if you're using the touch id compatible keyboard for your mac mini it is important to know that you can register more than just one single fingerprint you'll find it in the touch id and password tab and in here is where you could go in and register more additional fingerprints, giving access to not only other people, but also registering more fingers. So regardless of the position you're facing, you can always unlock your Mac by a simple tap. But as an added bonus, if you have an Apple Watch of some kind, if you scroll down, you'll be able to enable it. So if you get nearby within Bluetooth range, your Apple Watch can automatically unlock your Mac computer without having to use Touch ID. So if you're using a keyboard that does not have the Touch ID, but if you'd like to have the ability to quickly get access to it or use Apple Pay, you can just go in here and enable the Apple Watch of choice, enter your login credential to confirm, and now whenever you wake up your laptop from its lock screen, your Apple Watch will automatically give you feedback, letting you know that it did indeed successfully unlock your Mac. Now regardless if you're using a Magic Mouse or the trackpad from Apple, there are a couple of settings you may want to adjust to your own personal preference. For instance, for the trackpad, you'll find it right here in the trackpad tab in system settings. Right here where it says tap to click, by enabling this, a light tap on your trackpad will allow you to click on things. You may find your workflow to be a little bit more quicker than actually physically having to press down and actually hear that click. Experiment with it, all personal preference. I like having this on because I can lightly tap on things to move quickly, which is why I recommend it. But above here, you can also change your track speed if you like it to be quicker if you want to reach a certain page side of the page quicker from right to bottom just like you see there you'll be surprised how much faster you can increase your productivity by simply doing that and you can also adjust the click speed to the physical click if you want to be more aggressive or less aggressive medium works best for me now if we switch to a magic mouse you can also find these similar settings as well in the mouse section where here's where you can increase the speed or decrease the speed but not only that, my most favorite feature is the secondary click. Enable right side because by default it's turned off and this allows you to actually right click, which is where that's disabled by default. Another thing you may want to consider enabling to give you a, a natural mouse feel is enable natural scrolling. By having this on, your scrolling functionality is as natural as it is on any mouse. And of course over here you can adjust the speed as well. To this very day I'm still unsure why those are dis disabled by default. 
Now, real quick, if you've been enjoying this video so far, make sure to let me know by leaving this video a like because I like to keep my videos powered by you guys. That means no integrated ad integrations from brands, VPNs, or stuff like that. So by simply taking two seconds to leave that like button a like, that allows the channel to continue being sponsor free and just powered by you guys. So thank you so much for doing that. Now let's talk about the fun part, and that is playing PC Steam games on your Mac Mini. So there's three ways of doing this. Obviously, the first method is Apple Arcade in the App Store. This is the best way to do it because you don't have to download any third parties to make anything compatible. As you can find some popular games like Tomb Raider now, that's available on here, one-time purchase, or you could be subscribed to Apple Arcade, but you could find a bunch of cool flagship games like Bioshock as well. And then of course you could find some supported games in the Epic Games as well. But if you like to download PC Steam games from Steam, so long as you have a Steam account and you purchase these games for the PC side, you can just simply launch the Steam app after you download it from a web browser like Safari, Google Chrome, your personal preference. But all the games you have previously purchased like on your game library, if you download this third party app called Crossover, it is a one time purchase for 12 months for $80. But if you use this code you see right here on the screen, it's one that I personally used and I found online, buy it down to about $60. There is a free method of doing this if you want to use a third party to make PC games optimal for the M processor from Apple. But out of all of them, this is worth every penny because if you download the other one, it's a bit of a headache and it's not guaranteed to always work. And this is actually supported by the company extremely well. So much so that you could hit the install button and search for like popular games. You even got Skyrim, Diablo, Counter-Strike, Witcher. And if you're looking for more, you can just type in Assassin's Creed as an example. You can see Assassin's Creed is fully supported. Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood. It even gives you a rating right here if it runs great or not. Like Rogue, for example, hasn't really been fine tweaked to the point that it won't run perfectly. So I always go in here and search it up and see if it's compatible. And then I will go into the Steam store and actually purchase the game. And right now I have Cyberpunk. And all I had to do was just search up the name, click on it, hit install, and it does everything all automatically in the background. And then once it's done downloading it, you'll see it right here. You can either click on it right here, or you could go into your Steam store. Just go into your library, and then tap run. And in no time, your game will just boot up. And just like that. And now if you want to connect like a gaming controller, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch. Apple devices are pretty much compatible with gaming console controllers out of the box. You could either do it with the USB-C to USB-C, plug it in directly to your Mac computer front I.O. ports if you like. You can connect it and pair it via Bluetooth. As you can find all the controller settings here on the Steam section, you can literally click on controller settings and make it equipped for the game that you have selected manually. And in some games, if, it does, if you don't see that, you can always just launch the crossover app select the game if you know what you're doing you go adjust these settings but if you go into wireless controller but you can scroll down where it says game controller you can go in here and then select your game controller right here so we have the xbox and you could just override it override it if it's not connecting but in our case it detects it it's connected and then we only have the ability to disable and if you run into the same bug i did in case it's not working for you even though it shows it you need to enable the input and you'll find it in system settings and then type in input in the search bar and where it says privacy and security click on allow application to monitor inputs enable it for both steam and crossover and now your input settings will work once you launch those PC games, so long as they're compatible with a gaming controller on console. And everything works, joystick and everything else. So that's how you play flagship PC games basically on your Mac mini and it runs pretty well too. Very smoothly, I'm actually quite surprised for its size running AAA title games. Now these next ones are some little bonuses. Don't forget on your Mac, if you need to scan like a document using your iPhone, in case you don't have a scanner anymore on hand, regardless on the app you're using, if you hit right click, if you go all the way in the very bottom, you'll be able to see insert from an iPhone or iPad option. From here, just select the product that you like to use. If it's your main iPhone or an iPad, you can select scan document and just grab your device and you'll see the screen will automatically change. So you can actually scan something. And just like that, we have the scan document I just did right here. That was just a little example. I just took a picture of a corner of my desk.
Now, when filling up forms, you may find out how tedious it is to enter your address, your phone number, or email address. So on a Mac, it's super important to create some shortcuts to make this process quicker. You see, by going into your system settings, and then go down into the keyboard option, in the keyboard tab, if you scroll down to till you find text input, tap on text replacement, enter. Here are some of the shortcuts that are already made for your device. So as an example, I'm gonna go ahead and delete one that I use the most and that is my email address. Tap the plus icon. And then for my keyboard, I'm gonna have at one. So at one email address, hit save, hit done. And now if I open up a blank note as an example, and I do at one, hit space, it will automatically fill in my email address like so. So you can really utilize this to make some creative shortcuts to make your life easier. And then of course, thanks to the latest version of Mac OS, we now have the ability to mirror our iPhone. You can simply just select here, hit continue if you haven't done, done so. Unlock your phone to confirm. Allow all notifications if you like your no phone notifications to also appear on your Mac mini. Select get started. And then just unlock with your keyboard, touch ID, or your computer password. Now, just need to lock my phone because it's currently awake with the screen. And now I have the ability to literally control everything right here on my device. And this also supports click and dragging as well as airdropping things from one phone to my Mac. But in case it's not working for you, maybe it's connected to an older phone that you no longer have access to, you may want to go into your system settings. Go into Docs, scroll down to Desktop and Docs, right? And then from here, look for iPhone mirroring. I'm sorry, not iPhone mirroring, where it says Use iPhone Widget. Enable this, and then here's the drop-down menu where you can select the correct device. Select it, and now it should work without any problems. And there we have it. Those are the best settings you need to enable to actually use your Mac Mini M4 to its full potential. I hope you found this video informative and useful. If you did, you know, again, hit that like button. That helps out a lot. But if I missed something you'd like to share with everybody else, feel free to also comment down below. If you have a feature you like others to also be aware of to really allow them to use their device to its full potential. Other than that, that's everything. And thank you so much for watching. Oh, and real quick, if you'd like to find out how you can use, see your vehicle information on CarPlay, I cover that right over there where it actually will display you the tire as well as other additional information about your car. If you're wondering how you can finally enable it on iOS 18, all in there. Thank you once more for watching.